Okay, folks, uh, Pleiades and basically I went to the, the fifth, okay? Now remember this. What I'm trying to do is show you this. Hang on one second. Now pretty much I can prove to you here that we don't see Pleiades because basically here's a constellation and a big telescope shot from out in space, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to pop over here and we're going to go into s to this, okay? Now remember the dig that we thought was Pleiades that was up by us, okay? Now i.e. Jupiter is going to be back here. Uranus, Neptune, everything out. Our, what I've always tell you, meatball came in and we've seen that from Hawaii in our dark side of Earth. Okay, As you see the brightness, supergiants, the sun. The sun and the supergiants gets blocked out by this, the solar panel and also collects electrical energy. Now you can see the glow of the sun a little bit above the solar panel. Okay, Now here's the current map, locations and so forth of even don't really care about Mercury about at this time on this, but basically, also, I think I opened with Mercury, uh, basically, is there in the sun well, okay? So basically, I think I can even just go here real fast and pick out the idea that there is a shot on the 4th, okay, of Mercury, and i.e. the sun and the supergiants getting it on, okay, because it's huge out there, the brightness and the banging and the bombing, okay? And there's a dark the dark area of our sun, so forth and so on, and here is a dark area, so forth and so on, projecting out from the sun in the supergiants and all stuff like that. Okay, remember the sun is only not even 10 point something times Jupiter. Okay, 11. Okay, so the supergiants exist; they're out there, and I'll have all kinds of stuff here that I'll show you in data in a second. Now, what I'm trying to show you is Pleiades is basically no matter what is not what we are seeing in basically either one of these shots. Okay, and basically we end up seeing this here, okay, Mars, and then what is it? Basically supergiants. You see the glow and the sun that powers up the satellite here that's getting blocked by the blocker? Now I'll power down on this to like 125 or something like that and give you this, okay? And this is what we're looking at. Okay, we're looking at this right here, okay? And it's what we saw at different angles before up by what we were told to be Earth. But so I pop out come back a couple weeks later or whatever and we make a video and stuff like that. Now you see this here, there, okay? Now these could be planets that we know of and so forth and so on, okay? But number one, they are showing us where Mars is at and they are showing us where Earth is at on these fresher shots, okay? So I'll pump this back up to whatever. We'll just go like 200%, okay? And we're traveling through space and we still see this and we want to know what the flip, okay? Because that's toward the sun. The sun's there, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll prove it even more by popping around and going to the other 2B, okay? It's still there, and the sun's behind this block or over here, and that's our dark back door right here. And what is there is, basically, if I go ahead and go to, let me get my map, and that should be it right there. When we are blown up and looking at... If you're smart enough, you can get some free information from me when you're looking for searches. But anyway, you got to be quick. So, what you're doing here is you are looking at where we have Uranus and Neptune and Pluto and Jupiter out our back door right now. So, see, you don't see Jupiter in any of these shots right now. So that when I take you to, you are not going to see, and that's toward the sun. Because Jupiter's out back here like you knew before when you seen... And see, they didn't want to scare everybody by saying, hey, we got a comet zooming toward... Well, it wasn't going directly towards Earth, and it was going to miss us and everything like that, but they don't want to freak people out. So we know that Lovejoy went this way towards Jupiter, which is out our back door right now, i.e., it's out our back door now, as you will might be able to get to some time with the plow. But see, Jupiter's out our back door with Uranus and Neptune and Pluto in the dark. Okay, in the darkish area of what you see on these shots. Now, Mercury is the only thing that's down towards really close to the sun right now. Mercury and Venus, as you've seen in my earlier videos today. Okay, so we go back to the latest thing we've got is the fifth on these A and B on the blue shots. And there it is. You can't miss it. Now, is that what we were seeing on the night shots that I was showing you? And because we know that it has... And yes, there are constellations out there that are crosses, ladies and gentlemen. There's lots of constellations that are crosses, okay? And I've got getting a little bit more educated on the constellations because there's a ton of them, 
Okay, and you go you look at me and so forth. But also, there's one of those cross constellations up there. There's a lot of constellations that look like crosses out in space, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, folks. So we've got that right there because I'll we'll zoom in on that, and that's the same thing you see. And I'm pointing to in the other cluster. Do you see that? So we can zoom in on that more because now you've got a reference point to what we're looking at. Okay. So no matter what. Between us, as we look directly to the sun right now, if you go to look at, the sun will be behind that solar panel there, okay? So like I showed you in the earlier video today, I, mean, I think I made one or two videos today. I'm just concentrating on the info right here. There you go. And that's what we've been looking at that was closer over to Earth before. Now, we may have had seen Pleiades before, and I kind of said that it was Pleiades, but I could have been wrong, okay? Because no matter what, this is not Pleiades right here that we're seeing, okay? Now, more than likely, this could be Venus up here, okay? That could possibly be Venus right there. But look how much it's spinning and turning so fast, okay, within a day. Because this is pretty much a day's lapse, folks. Every time we look at one of these little movies like this, this is like a day. 23 point something hours, okay? So, more than likely, that's Venus, okay? And as I back out of this real fast, we'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about there because there's Earth, okay? And then we will go ahead and we will hit up this so more than likely that's probably Venus okay and Mercury's in the hole by the Sun and we don't even see it in the shot pretty much okay between each one of these shots and you kind of see the names that I'm when I basically I can put it up on here there's no really okay so and then we're looking at this so this is the same thing there so we'll pump that up to 400 and something so what we're wanting to know and they then every time folks when we stumble upon pretty much I get that Yes, there as you've always seen in the past. And no, this computer and the feed and the whole nine yards, and there's nothing overwhelmed. The only thing on here, and there's nothing. I'm not, I can log this thing down, but I have to run like all kinds of stuff. I'd have to have, I'm not going to go into it. But anyway, so that's our same thing that we see on the other angle of the other shot because we know if by now, by you know the difference between A and B, and if not, Note some of the people that say good things about what I end up finding and so forth, and that they do too, because we look at this stuff if you're looking at space stuff. A lot of people... Now, early 2011, if anybody was paying attention to me, I showed you and proved to you that basically there's electrical signals that we know of that is very interesting to everybody from Cygni and Cygnus A and B, basically, to say it correctly, okay? Uh, Denab and Sattler, okay? There's some electrical signals that have been heard for a long time up there, and also... Let's go to an article on Saturn. Now, remember I was telling you about the auroral heartbeat. Now, I'm not. what I'm trying to do is make you proved, and basically you paying attention about me saying that there's getting to be a heartbeat from the CMEs, folks. Yes, the coronal mass ejections, not just normal little sun flares, mass ejections, okay? This guy did, this was an article in 2010, and it was a study between 2005 and 2009. And we do know that I've also shown you footage from Saturn that basically looks like we have a dynamo and a basically a dynamo is something that's just putting off electrical energy and it looks like there's actually a generator up there okay on top of Saturn okay and then when I was talking about Saturn the New York Post right at Christmas time bam they put something on the on their on their newspaper okay because some scientists or whatever is like, yeah, 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 this guy is going to let help me. Because there are some scientists out there, folks, that are scared crapless of the spook. Okay? The secret boxes. Okay? Keep everybody shut. So we got free speech. Educating and sharing and so forth and so on. So anyway, this is an interesting shot of Saturn. Because you get these views of it, ladies and gentlemen. This is from Cassini, okay? Ultraviolet auroras, okay, of Saturn so forth and so on. Now, more than, let's, now remember, location, location, Okay? High, low, don't care about that. It, what I'm calling is a point, okay? And yes, we know there's massive distances from some of these stars and so forth and so on. So we got Proximity Centauri now. Location, location, location. And that's where they are currently and so forth and so on, okay? Now, yes, millions of miles away or whatever, maybe billions or whatever. It doesn't even flip and matter. But Proximity Centauri and all these other supergiant suns are glowing down on Earth no matter what anybody wants to say, okay? Now, watch. Now, the, here is the drippling of a lot of these. Each one of these is a star and a sun that's out here in the supergiants, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, they line up this perfectly, ladies and gentlemen. 
okay, like a little snake, but the sun is in here. And if you can keep on seeing it, and I'm not even going to screw up and make myself wrong as I'm going here and giving you the data real fast. Now check this one out. See this one over here? So this is what I'm wondering, is this possibly it? And we are seeing this, this, or this, or all of these, three or four of these down in Antarctica right now, okay? Remember, we rotate to the suns. The suns, ladies and gentlemen, these are all suns in the supergiants. Main sequence, 100 of the closest stars to Earth, okay? And that's pretty much how they go. Sun, Proximity Centauri, Rigel Cantaris A, Rigel Cantaris B, Barnard Star, Wolf 359, 359, and everything, blah, 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 stumble, stumble, I don't care. And yes, folks, I can do it like this. That's Cyrus B, folks. And we know how big and bright Cyrus is. And that's at an angle way back. Now, the sun's somewhere in here if I keep on pointing, okay? Wolf, 359. And remember, a lot of this stuff is a long ways away, okay? Now, this is everything that's in the well, folks, okay? And as you keep going through there, I'm not going to waste my time with reading them off because I just keep on pointing and going through here and giving you the... But all this stuff is in a row. And they know it, Okay? These are all suns that a lot of them are bigger and brighter than even our sun. It's basically what's going on is the, the whole fact that the idea that there's way more than one flipping sun. And a lot of astrologers and stuff have known it for a long flipping time. Okay? So there's Rigel Cantaris B. And then if I move along, we should end up... There's Steady. So we get all this stuff beaten down on us here on Earth, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what. Okay? Combinations of stars flipping around, and there's the sun, okay? So there's all this stuff in a line and in a row. And yes, more than likely, we are moving away from the sun right now and so forth. So that's a lot of the stuff that is hecka close and in line and out here and has broken out of basically the supergiant's main sequence. And that's what's going on in space right now in formations and so forth and so on, okay? Altair is way the hell back. So that's how all this stuff lines up in the supergiants right now, folks. Okay, there's the sun. So more than likely right now, Atchard, and a lot of this stuff moves very fast over so many days, okay? And basically electrical energy, and that's what we're talking about, is communications from energy to this to that. Because Rigel Cantaris A used to be up here too. Now I'm wondering where the heck it's at right now. So no matter what, folks, this is the footage from the 5th. And I pretty think if I just slide down, we should be able to, that's the 5th, folks, of this year, 2012, okay? This is recent footage. So, at a long distance, because basically it's at least one AU, okay? And we are a little bit under one AU all the time. They always say it's one AU, but it's a little bit smaller than that. It's 0.9 something all the time that we are pretty much away from the sun. We only get to a maximum of 1.0 and then a little bit of numbers AU at a certain distance. And we are just starting to move away from our closest ever to the sun in a long time recorded by man. Okay, ladies and gentlemen? And we're moving 6,000 miles faster through space than we normally do at our 60,000 miles an hour through space and so forth and so on. So it's very interesting to start understanding what the hell, what supergiants or what star that is over there because it's more than likely not Cyrus, okay? And if it is, then we found Cyrus and a lot of stuff that's around Cyrus that we haven't seen with telescopes and so forth and so on because, and if so, then you're getting a real good view when I blow this up to a thousand. So if it is Cyrus, we have some very interesting but no matter what, it's there, and it's in both of these shots that I keep showing you, because it's either there or there, and it's the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can see, just in the daytime, folks, you see that movement of the right of it underneath the satellite? It moves to the right, something massive ne next to it. So you get some interesting movement there on that shot. So all the way from one side of the space, a massive shot of it there. At the other side, on basically this is exactly, I think this is, doesn't matter, it's A. That's what we're looking at there, an A, okay? And we're looking at that right there. So no matter what, you can see here when we blow up to 1,000, you can see something massive that's just beyond the little temple corner of that that's out there by that on this side of the shot, which is basically H-12B, and you're looking right down there. So, once again, all of our armed forces, Air Force, NASA, Navy, all our armed branches, Army, Coast Guard, everything, Marines, everything, okay? We love it, okay? We're seeing all kinds of stuff in space. 
Okay, Titan is one of Saturn's moons, folks, and it's the only thing that's ever made us look at anything that's got anything kind of like rocks like Earth does, okay, water and so forth and so on. And they don't know, they don't talk about too much. Saturn is the hot spot, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and it's cool, colder than where Earth is at in, in space, but Saturn's where some more facts and data soon.